video, we'll be looking at the heart structure. Now, this is a typical picture of the heart that I found on the internet. However, it's going to be really important that you actually practice enough past exam questions and be familiar with the different variations of diagrams that they may use so they can recognize it no matter what diagram they give you in, the, in your exam. So the first thing that we're going to look at will be the different chambers and actually knowing how to interpret between left and right. And then we're going to look at the different vessels as well. And then finally ending on uh, how the blood is actually flowing through them. So first of all is how do we tell between the left and the right? Now, first thing that you'll probably notice is this uh, particular wall in the middle of the heart. Now that wall is called the septum. Uh, as a baby is uh, growing in this mother's uterus, the septum has actually got a hole in it to allow the blood to flow through. And that's the, that is because actually as a baby, when you're still inside the womb, you are not really breathing it and any oxygen is delivered uh, through the mother's blood through your umbilical cord. So back then there's no need for that septum to have uh, to be completely developed. But as the baby is born, then the septums, the uh, hole in the septum wall will actually start to uh, form and solidify to actually separate the two sides of the heart, which will deliver deoxygenated or oxygenated blood. So in this case, you can see that the uh, when we're looking at it, this is our left and then this is our right. Uh, but imagine when you're looking at the diagram, you're looking at someone else's heart that is standing opposite you. So while this is your left, this is actually the person's right hand side. And whereas this is your right, it is the person's left hand side. So therefore, we refer to this side as the right, then this side as the left. And you can see that there are four chambers in the diagram. The two top chambers are called atria or atrium for singular. And the two chambers in the bottom are called the ventricles. So therefore, this side is called the right atrium. And this on the bottom part will be the right ventricle. That would be the left atrium. And that bottom part will be the left ventricle. Another thing to notice is that the uh, wall on the left hand side is actually a lot thicker than the right ventricle wall, although this diagram is not actually making that very, very clear. But when you're looking at a diagram, another way to tell is that this side will be a lot thicker. And that has something to do with the, uh, the direction of the blood flow, which we'll talk about briefly later on. So these are the four chambers of the heart. Now let's have a look at the different blood vessels that are going in and out of the heart. First of all, let's look at the blue vessel uh, that is actually carrying the blood into the right atrium. Now this is called the vena cava. Now the vena cava actually has different parts to it. We can have the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava that delivers the blood from all around the body um, into the heart. Now you can so notice that it's colored in blue uh, to represent the fact that the vena cava carries deoxygenated blood. So after the blood has gone to the other organs, they would deliver the oxygen and then remove the carbon dioxide from the organs and then deliver them back into the heart. And so the inferior vena cava would carry the blood from the bottom part of or the lower part of the body, whereas the vena cava would deliver the blood from the upper part of the body. So the blood comes through the vena cava, it will enter the right atrium and then into the right ventricle. But you'll notice that there is this structure in the middle, which is a, a valve. Now this bit is called the tricuspid valve. Now valves in general, you will see that there are quite a few here, uh, they prevent the backflow of blood. So in this case, it's called a tricuspid valve because it's held in place by three heart tendons. So what happens is as the right atrium contracts, uh, it will push the blood into the right ventricle, so pushing open the tricuspid valve. But as the right ventricle contracts, it will push the blood upwards. But the thing is we want to ensure it's all going to leave the heart rather than going back into the right atrium. So as it contracts, you can see that the tricuspid valve would actually close like this, stopping the blood from going backwards. So that is why it's really important for the valves to actually uh, be functional because if not, there will be backflow of blood, meaning there is not an efficiency in terms of blood delivery and getting oxygenated and delivering the blood around the body. So as the blood travels from the right ventricle out, uh, you will see there is another valve there. Now this pair of valves here would have the same name as that valve, which are referred to as the semilunar valve. So the semilunar valve does the same thing. It also prevents the backflow of blood, but this time it's preventing the blood from going uh, from this vessel back into the ventricles here. 
So the vessel that is going this way is actually called the pulmonary artery. Now most of the time arteries carry oxygenated blood, but that's not so uh, in this case. The pulmonary artery delivers the blood from uh, the heart into the lungs, which is what pulmonary refers to. And in this case, because remember we're delivering deoxygenated blood into the heart, therefore any blood that goes out in this case would be deoxygenated as well. But it's still referred to as the artery because arteries are always referring to vessels that are leaving the heart. So keep in mind artery, A, away from the heart. So that is why the pulmonary artery is the only artery in the body that carries deoxygenated blood from the heart into the lungs. So as the blood travels through the lungs, it will get uh, it will do gas exchange. So the carbon dioxide leaves the red blood cells or leaves the blood, and the oxygen will then enter the red blood cells uh, carried by the hemoglobin. And then they will then move the blood back into the heart, ready for it to be pumped around the body again. So these two vessels are a part of the pulmonary vein. So the pulmonary vein carries the blood from the lungs back into the heart. Uh, and again, it's very, very rare for the veins to carry oxygenated blood, but this is one exception here. So as the oxygenated blood uh, enters the left atrium, it will push open these valves to get into the left ventricle. So these valves are referred to as the bicuspid valve. So again, prevents the backflow of blood from the left ventricle back into the left atrium and is called bicuspid because it's held in place by two heart tendons. So the blood will enter the left ventricle and then it will leave through these semilunar valves again uh, into this particular structure here. And that is the biggest uh, artery in the body, which is the aorta. And the aorta is extremely elastic uh, because it's got it has to withstand the high blood pressure from the heart itself, and to, and it's there to deliver the blood, uh, the oxygenated blood from the heart to the rest of the body. So you can see all of these extensions here are about carrying the blood to different parts of the body. So this is the structure of the heart. So to summarize, uh, here we've got the vena cava. So the deoxygenated blood will then enter uh, via the vena cava into the right atrium like so. Then it will push open the tricuspid valve to enter the right ventricle. From here, the right ventricle contracts, pushing the blood out through the vena uh, semilunar valve uh, into the pulmonary artery, which then enters the lungs uh, for gas exchange. And from the lungs, what will happen is that the blood gets oxygenated and then it will enter the heart again through the pulmonary vein. It will be in the left atrium, which then contracts to push the blood through the bicuspid valve into the left ventricle, which then also then contracts to push the blood back out through the semilunar valve here. And then it will then exit the heart via the aorta on the top bit here instead. And then it will travel throughout the rest of the body uh, either to the top part of the body or the bottom bit as well to deliver the oxygen uh, to those organs before getting deoxygenated and then it re-enters through the vena cava either from the top of the body or the bottom part here as well. So that is the structure of the heart.